Okay, this is the um, a replay of my Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles uh, Deathless Any Percent run of uh, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, 23 minutes, 36 seconds or so. Um, I'm doing this commentary for this particular um, uh, video because um, I must have hit a hotkey for switching scenes in OBS instead of the splitter. And uh, so this is a uh, just a watch through in, in a video to get to, to capture it. Uh, the splitter won't be going because uh, the time's already in the splits. Um, so uh, with that, we're going to go ahead and press play. All right, I was uh, listening to the beat on the on the title screen there, and uh, <clears throat> I think it was a very good uh, good timing because you'll see later in the run uh, where the majority of my time save is. I think this evening I had done um, a few different attempts. I can't say exactly for sure how many attempts that I had done, but uh, only a few leading up to this particular run. I did not do any uh, screen scrolling in this run. I watched a video on how to do the screen scrolling, but I have uh, yet uh, done any sort of practice with it. Particularly because the uh, screen scrolling in the Technodrome, um, I didn't want to fail any of the screen scrolling. Uh, we didn't get the uh, best pattern here for Rocksteady, um, but uh, we did finish him off rather quickly. I don't, man, I don't remember uh, where my splits were in the, at this point. I think maybe uh, I was behind maybe eight seconds. Yes, Travis. I was lucky to get that guy as the mini boss because you only have to hit him once. Oh yeah, anytime you get a PB or you do something well, I like to I like to finish the night before I go to bed with a, a little celebration. Everything went pretty well through here. I made this jump. Uh, it always freaks me out every time I have to do it. If you jump too early, you uh, fall down. And if you jump uh, too late, well, you just simply walk off. Thankfully, the, um, the electricity there shut off rather quickly. I have a tendency to wait for that one to shut off for some reason.
Yeah, I was like, hmm, maybe I should hold back. No, no, I'm just, I'm just gonna push through. I have enough, <laughs> have enough energy, so I decided that I was just gonna drive straight through. I saved time during this segment. If I remember correctly, I had saved time, but I was still one second behind uh, due to the uh, time loss on the rock study split. But I was generally pleased with the execution of it all. I always find it interesting the graphical distortions that a direct feed captures. It's those things you don't see on your television, but it's being outputted by the system. And I know a capture card will actually capture that because it's not limited by the, uh, the space of the television. I was quite pleased that I was doing a, a raw feed of this particular performance. why I continued walking towards the wall there. I was supposed to be pushing up. I, s I saved some time here because I got the jump up on the first try. Usually um, it takes me several tries to get up there, but I clipped up there on the very first try. I did that on the attempt before this as well, so I was quite pleased. Looking back, I guess I didn't realize I didn't fire off that missile soon enough. I'm quite pleased how this game has uh, progressed for me. Because this game was very difficult for me when I was a child, and I think uh, being able to pick up a, a game that was a challenge for you when you were a kid and be able to uh, manhandle it as you get older, you know, it's like retribution. It's like setting the record straight that, you know, this game is not hard enough for me. You know, I can beat it. This, this time I, I did a, a slightly different route with the, uh, near the end there. This is actually the first time that I picked up that weapon to use it here, but it seemed to be quite effective and quickly and quick. I worked through there quickly. I still don't understand when and how um, the two, there are two different sets of enemies that occur in this game. And right there, I just switched to the other set of enemies. 
Uh, I'm not quite sure when, where, or how of any of that. Uh, I wish I knew. Because I would like to be able to uh, control that in the game. And here we do the basic pizza trick. I like to uh, have full life with Leo and just go down one time with Donnie and then I'm done. Of course I'm wasting time here because I'm reading chat. But uh, I wasn't planning on playing Ninja Turtles tonight, but uh, <clears throat> I got frustrated with who, who, uh, who framed Roger Rabbit. I wasn't sure what caused that jump there. It's, um, I was trying to drop off the ladder, but the problem, I had never uh, even went down the ladder. And of course, I took it in the face as usual. It was Downy this time. And I'm really pleased with the way this uh, Mecha Turtle went. I was able to uh, get him to uh, get stuck again. This is my own strat that I came up with. It's the strat that I came up with for uh, my first Deathless run, and I just stuck with it. I haven't made any attempts to speed it up. Uh, I don't always get the second form to be stuck up there. I'm reading chat again. I'm not very good at multitasking. I believe I can just jump up there, and I don't think I ever do. But, but I think that I can just jump right up there. Yeah. Wasted some time there. There's a lot of optimizations I can do in my run. Um, but it was unnecessary because most of my time save was where the Technodrome was going to spawn. And this, this PB is both a matter of execution. I, I did improve on execution, which was good. But we did get the Technodrome spawn exactly when we wanted to. This is the first time I've had that in a run, where I got it in the most favorable location. There is a faster route um, across there, but I have made no attempts to try to figure it out. I don't know what other people actually do in that particular location, but that's what I f figured out to do. I can't really say if it's slow or, or fast. I mean... The world record is, I think, seven minutes? Six or seven minutes faster than what I did here, which involves uh, clipping through ceilings and stuff, and uh, much greater optimization, which I wouldn't mind learning over time. This is a great game. The, the soundtrack is good, uh, and I've, I've really taken to it. I don't know why, but I just, I just keep picking it up. Uh, for my NES challenge, I uh, completed my 36th game on my journey to beat a lots of the NES games. I don't have a strat for this room, and I, I really need to have one. And uh, so after I beat Mega Man 3 Deathless this evening, I decided that I was going to learn Who Framed Roger Rabbit, because when I was a kid, who Framed Roger Rabbit was, what do you do? The whole thing was shrouded in mystery, so I'd like to uh, demystify the game if I could. 
I, I, I wouldn't mind even spending a week on it just, just so that I could get some content together that, that could help somebody else to understand the RNG that's uh, involved in all of the uh, things. This room went, went well. Uh, I made some adjustments there so that I wasn't going to get hit back or anything. I was very pleased with the execution of that particular room. Not so much of this one. As you can see, like everything that I could have done wrong, I did. Uh, major time saves there. And so once I got frustrated enough after playing uh, Frame Ranger Rabbit for about an hour or two, uh, I decided uh, that uh, for the rest of the evening I was going to run Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. I don't normally do that because I like to try and focus on uh, beating the next game, Deathless, of my NES challenge. And for those uh, who don't know, I am... Um, uh, I try to beat NES games deathless if possible, and I started this month a challenge of beating as many NES games as possible. And uh, I do have a spreadsheet in my game section below called uh, Game Gaming Performances. In the NES Challenge tab, you'll be able to uh, see uh, the different times and everything. This is actually one of the hardest rooms for me in the game, just because of all the areas that could fail. Um, the enemy at the end, for example, can... No, I, I, I didn't uh, hit downward, unfortunately. I wasn't prepared for having picked up that weapon. But I'll just push through, grab some pizza, and keep going. I don't normally take that hit on that guy, but I decided to kill him off. Now this particular run does not move me up, uh... Yeah, this guy kept throwing boomerangs at me, and it was just really irritating. I thought I'd kill one or two of the boomerangs, but yeah, it just... It just, it just kept going. So far, I have not died in this section in an actual run. Uh, basically, you just kind of run to the edge, and your guy just kind of runs, drops off. Um, so I'm kind of thankful that I haven't failed this in the actual run yet. That pizza right there? Nobody goes for that pizza. You can't get that pizza. The programmers are teasing you with a pizza you can't get without dying. I thought this fight went pretty well too. So when you pause with his mouth open there, it, it keeps that there, and I jumped to the far edge there because once he's defeated, you save the time of the animation of you walking to the right. Because you have to watch yourself walk all the way to the right. It's kind of like Contra, where you want to like jump up in the air and try to land, try to avoid any of the delays that are taking place. Now this is the bread and butter of this room. I press start on the title screen, within an eight frame window where there's seven of those frames where I will get the favorable spawn. And this is exactly what I do. I go to the fastest and easiest location. I could have dropped off these ladders. I could have sped up this segment, but uh, I didn't. I could have went to the left and saved time here as well. Uh, I don't know what I was thinking. But it didn't matter because once I found the Technodrome here, it was like two and a half minutes were saved. And this time, I, you know, I take out this particular gun and I decide that I'm gonna just, I'm gonna be a little bit more aggressive than I normally am. And I decided that I was going to start going for the eye, even before I take out this gun on the right. Normally I take out the gun, but everything... Other than the fact that I missed the eye several times jumping up. 
because I wasn't holding up well. Uh, this fight could have went a lot quicker for sure. But I was pleased that I had so much health afterward. And that's what mattered. I was even standing near the left side so I don't have to watch my animation walk to the right before it jumps up. Because you kind of freeze where you're at and then you walk. So at this point I was two and a half minutes up uh, because I got the Technodrome in the uh, quickest position area, the easiest area, and I, I looked at it in the exact uh, I looked for. It. So we got one of these uh, jetpack guys, which was nice. I've seen two in there, I believe. I was quite aggressive through this particular area because I felt confident that I was going to be able to respond to uh, both high and low spawns. So at this point, um, I was very confident because I had so much life for Mikey, for Raph, for Leo. Um, you'll see here when I switch that I have life for a, a lot of life for my turtles. And that was that was good because I was able to use up some of that life. So at this point I decided, you know, I want to conserve more life and I'm not gonna switch to any other turtle at this point. I didn't get the jetpack spawn there either, which was nice. Although it would have been better to switch to Donnie, it would have, I would have been able to kill this guy sooner, but I decided that I was going to just take the hit and just run. I was, I was going to save time with that. I, I got to Leo with the scroll weapon and just pushed straight through here. I always do a slight delay. You probably see me delay at times. And I got the better spawns in this room, which was nice. Once again, I don't know how to... Uh, control what spawns you get in these rooms, but I got these spawns where you can just walk right through. Little time waste there. Uh, that was unintentional. I didn't do the uh, the half jump like that right there. Please, everything worked out in this room as well as it did. Um, this is where, for some reason, in practice, I could get this every single time. But for, for some reason, um, I just don't know why this seems to be so hard for me. And so at that point, I, I switched to Donnie, but I uh, went right too far and kept one of the jetpack spawns. Uh, at this point I was... I was kind of concerned. I was like, yeah, yeah, I need to switch to Mikey. Mikey can take it in the face. And he, he can push through with all the life that he has. Um, but he was the last turtle that, that could take some real damage. And I was lucky to have him. I'd do a quick assessment of my turtles to see where I'm at because... Kind of concerned. There we go. Once I killed him, the run was over. That 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 was that was it. Shredder is one of the most anticlimactic bosses of NES games. He cannot hit me where I'm standing. So I just sit there and hit him. He can't hit me. Not because I'm hitting him, but literally for some reason, he just can't hit me. So I hit the splitter, it was 23 minutes, 36 seconds, and 0.3 something. And um, yeah, I saved two and a half seconds on the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles because of the uh, Technodrome spawning in the right location. I wish some of the execution was a little bit cleaner. I also wish that uh, some of the, uh, well that hallway especially with Leo, for some reason I'm just 
not pulling off that hall that hallway correctly. I haven't done any practice in it at all. Uh, but I was pleased to have a PB on there. And so um, that's my uh, my commentary, my replay. Uh, so I appreciate you watching that. Okay, 